Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Conan Todd. But you didn't know that was my middle name, but it is. Big, big episode this week. We're the, the, I, can I just say, January, we've started as we mean to go on. Big episodes. It's a fun time. Before we go anywhere, I want to plug the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast. If we hit a thousand, bear in mind at the time of recording, we're about 950. If we hit a thousand, like consistently, consistent level, if we hit a thousand, there's some talk amongst the group here about what constitutes getting a thousand. Uh, caveats, right? Um, with the, the name of the indie band, the Dan Micro. We are going to get tattoos of We Teacups. Mm-hmm. Willie G is going to do tattoos for us. And I'm roping everyone in. Dan is reluctantly getting one. Mike. My guest, I'm not even, well, it's in the description, Karen Bartlett, that it's in the description, but don't say anything. Um, William Thompson, uh, who else said they get one? Who do we phone? Oh, you, we phone Karen. Uh, maybe Dave will get one. Who knows? So w- if you want to join the Patreon, and by the way, we do like the bonus episodes, the live episodes, the live episode from the Limelight's on there, there's stand-up on there. Uh, Patreon.com slash Teeth Me Podcast for a couple of quid a month. Um, but the tattoo should be the main incentive. We are sponsored by none other than Thompson's Teas. Now, let me tell you about these guys. These are a, This is a family of tea nuts. These guys, you couldn't go for a dinner at the Thompson family household because all they'd want to talk about is tea. And I love, I mean, it's a Tea With Me podcast. I love tea, but compared to these guys, not, not a patch. They lo- If you went to the Thompson family household for a dinner, right? The starter would be tea. The mains would be tea. And what are you going to wash that down with the dessert? Pavlova, because I know it's not tea, but they like pavlova. But they have that with a cup of tea. They make panjana. And you go, is that is that not from like India or, you know, Sri Lanka or, or Boston? No, it's not. It's from right here at Belfast. We'll make it here, fuck's sake. Sorry, I don't know if I should have sworn during that, but they're that passionate about tea. It's made in Belfast, Punjab. It's Northern Ireland's number one selling tea, for God's sake. Which is, if you're going to be number one selling tea anywhere, here is probably the toughest place to be number one. Because there's a lot of guys running about, trying to shift leaves. You know, you've got, you've got Tetley. <laughs> Spit on Tetley. You've got PG Tips. Ugh. What else? Who else will run about? Nambari. And then you've got Barry's. Too many Barry's. The Thompsons are knocking it out of the park. Punjana, keep drinking. It's Northern Ireland's number one selling tea. We drink, we drink it on the pod. You love it. That's our, that's our slogan. You love it. So just keep drinking it. We are also sponsored by Manscaped. Did you say Landscaped? Nope. I said Manscaped, the number one in men's below the belt grooming. Everything above the belt, not sexy. Everything below the belt, if it's done right, sexy. And these guys are these guys have been shearing blokes since a year dot. Uh, in fact, that might only started a few years ago. I don't know. <laughs> For, founded in two thousand and seventeen. I don't know when they were founded. All I know is, if you're looking to neaten up down below, and I don't mean the ankles, I don't mean the knees. I mean specifically your dick and balls, etc. Your dick and balls, etc. I don't know what's going on there, but I do know that if you take a lawnmower 4.0 to it, which is this electric razor that Manscaped have with wireless charging, I know you'll come out bald as a coot if you want down there. You Basically, like the new year is a time where people go, oh, I'm going to start this. Like, new year, new me. But actually, if you took your trousers and pants off, you'd realise that it's still the old you. You know, a lot of people are still unkept down there. You know, Tom Hanks and Castaway vibes. And that's not what you should be. You know, Manscaped have these quality products. Ball deodorant, ball cleanser, ball wipes. Now, I'm driving a Tesla this week because they just gave me it for a week and it self-drives. And what's more impressive than that is ball deodorant. Like, Elon Musk probably like, that's hectic you're saying that. Genuinely, if you told me 10 years ago, I'd be talking to a camera about ball deodorant. I'd have said, I'd have said you're crazy. 
but here we are doing it. And we have a deal with Manscaped. We use a code T with me for 20% off and free shipping. I, I made it sound like if you do that, then there's something else. But if you use a code T with me, you get 20% off and free shipping. I said, if you use a code T with me and get 20% off and free shipping, as if there'd be something after that, but there isn't. That's all you need to do. I'm too, too warm. Manscaped. My guest today is none other than um, a man known to me- known to some as the Goblin King, a man known to others as Twank, but known simply to us as Kieran Malicky Jared Bartlett. Right or wrong? Right, right. People think that the Jared is a confirmation name, but that's my actual name. What's your confirmation name? Martin. All wishes. What? Martin. Martin. After Saint Martin de Porres. <laughs> Martin de Porres? He plays for Real Madrid. <laughs> it's not a saint. Uh, yeah. So, like, they make you pick a saint, and then you learn about that saint. Right. I mean, say the Martin de Porres? Tell me yeah. more about him. So he sounds a, fucking cute. I believe, I believe a South American saint. He would have to. He's, well, he's he, certainly not from the Shankle, yeah. called Martin de Porres. Uh, de Porres. And uh, he, uh, <laughs> he's not Irish, but the... the um, Apparently he could he could buy locate, hmm? which is man. I don't mean like I, I, when people say that. Can you buy locate? I'm like, is that like a type of gator for like <laughs> buy people? But like he could be in two. <laughs> pl- yeah, he could be in two places at once, just doing shit. Martin de Porres? Yeah, I think so. He must Martin de could something. be could be playing badminton, but also making an omelet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's your favorite saint? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Alan Saint Maximan. No, uh, <laughs> who's my favourite saint? Shit. I enjoy. I enjoy because I went to Aquinas. We'll go Thomas Aquinas. Like you know what I mean. What was he known for? For being thick, apparently. But then, like, uh, like thick as it, people thought he was thick. Uh, but then turns out like he's an amazing philosopher and. Hey, you know, story of my life. <laughs> people think I'm this like thick, you know, <clears throat> you know, airhead bimbo guy. Secretly, mm. ask me anything. Ask yeah. me anything. Ask you anything. Yeah. Have you ever used the ball wipes? I have. The ball wipes, no. The ball toner, yes. And I looked at my balls after it and I thought, are these more toned? And the answer was yes. Toner? Yeah. Like, is that like makeup for your balls? Is yeah. it no, it's like to just tone the skin. Oh, right. Okay. All right. I don't well, know what that means. <laughs> like, well, I, I got the. Use the ball wipes? I got, I got the wipes. Uh, for uh, I mean I'm saying for Christmas I didn't buy them for myself right. ahead of Christmas you know like I didn't get them you know where you go oh, I'm getting that was this a gift from your wife yeah it would be weird if it was your mom wouldn't it I know yeah yeah. But also they, even though coming from your wife it is slightly weird because it is sort of somebody going sort, sort out. your bollocks out but like did you uh, uh, did you, she use our discount code she may well have I don't know we'll have to Damn, find look out into that because if not tell her to send the products back used or unused <laughs> and then buy them again used, used discount or code unused to Oh yeah. no! You could say. Do you think there's a market to buy your used ball wipes? I think probably. Yeah. Probably in North Belfast maybe. Yeah. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Nuts Corner. Smithfield. If yeah. you set up a, a shop in Smith, a retail unit in Smithfield, <laughs> yeah. selling your ball wipes. Yeah. <laughs> if if that was going to be anywhere, it would be Smithfield. Yeah. Oh, Let me ask you this, big shooter. If you, if human existence was wiped out, but you were the only person left, you know that like movie scenario yeah would i still wear clothes no i, I know you wouldn't wear clothes <laughs> but what would you what would you get up to what would you do like would you you know would you go and like buy like not buy would you go and get the best car you could would you like to rip around belfast driving a ferrari how how has human existence been wiped out right yeah where all the people are dead apart from me but cars are still a thing is it just it's just happened and it's right. it's a thing you can't explain and you could let me ask you this would you dedicate time to finding out what happened or would you just be like well fuck it's happened let me just get I'd on I'd probably life. put on a one man show of what happened you know what I mean just direct, directed by produced by starring Ima- imagine like one other person had survived and they were like looking for life all over Belfast and they kept kept hearing this wee bit of a noise like a like a tap like a tap 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 and like it kept drawing them towards like Belfast and they were like running Strum Millis and it was like 
tap, tap, tap. And they're like, <laughs> someone maybe doing Morse code or whatever, have I lost my mind? And then it just led them into the lyric and you had two tap shoes on <laughs> and you were performing a one man show called Desolation. <laughs> I don't know what I would do in that situation. Would I you, mean, no, but would you like, I'd play FIFA if it was still available. Everything's available, everything's untouched. It's just all humans are gone. So you can make your own subway. You make your own so you could, I love that that's your level. So you could like the world. The world's yours, and you want to go in the subway. Just the put person. a wee. You want to put a wee bit more meat in. Yeah, just uh, no. It, it's I, I would just I would do a sauce right. They never sauce it properly. As in they do too much or the, too little or what's your gripe? Things, they never sauce it right to the end. Right. So you always get a dry bite on both ends. I've stopped going the subway to be fair, not because of that reason. What What's the reason? I think I said this before. It was about like the the weird. I found somebody did like a DNA test of their tuna mayo and realized like there's no tuna in it. So I was like, "What do you mean they did a DNA like an, like like ancestry type?" No, like you know, like they did like a. Is uh, tuna like, Spanish with Irish some, descent? Some kind of some kind of uh, like chemical thing, like you know, where the like they're they're able to profile what's in it, and there was no fish in it. Do you know what I like? Right, you you know I'm the unwise philosopher, right? I don't really know a lot of stuff, and you do, and it's very rare you get caught out. But when I said, "Is it like a chemical?" You said it's a chemical thing, and then asked you more about it. You don't know what they did to it. It's a DNA profile. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, like they don't go, they don't send it to Ancestry dot com and go, "Where did this tuna come from?" Have you from? ever done that? What Ancestry dot com? Sent tuna to Ancestry dot com. <laughs> no, have you ever like sent bad shea bones in? Uh, <laughs> do, think, uh, do you know much about your ancestors? I know some. And genuinely, I know, yeah. Like what? Well, like my great my great granda fought in World War One. It, it sounds like a great guy. So, uh, I think he had a squad of kids. Classic fighting uh, with him in World War uh, with him in World War One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he brought like seven teenagers to the Somme. Get in there, you wee bastards! <laughs> so, You're going uh, to work with your nanny uh, today. <laughs> he uh, no, apparently I think he had a squad of kids. So my my granny was born in 1904 right and she was the uh she was the eldest in their family so between oh, 19 Bel belfast yeah so between 1904 and like 1914 when the war when the war started in that 10 years i think they had six or seven kids right and he was in the war so was he sending it back so my granny's ma died right right and then like at the near the start of the war and um, my granny was sort of then as the oldest was like raising her brothers and sisters from like being like nine or ten, right? Uh made her made her dead on, by the way. And then um and uh and then I think around nineteen sixteen, uh my great granda went, I know what I'll do. I'll go to the fucking war and he went over to the war just to get his he, head short. He was in the Enniskillen Fusiliers. Yeah. And uh, I went Oh wait! Imagine that. <laughs> Just looking a bit of fucking piece here. Yeah, shard <laughs> with mustard gas. Uh, so he went and got. Uh, he's good. He, he, he's good. This is bad. Trust me, if you fucking listen to her, I've just, I've just, just remembered, mate. This is fucking excellent. I can't believe that this has come up. So, is the Alexander Branham was his name, right? So he went, um, he went over to the war. Got mustard gassed and then uh, and riddled apparently with machine gun fire. Oh, I thought you meant like with uh, the well, with some sort of syphilis. Yeah, no, he um he with trench stick and uh, so I I love diseases like that. You know where they're like it's like a name like that, like cross trench rot food. or like trench food. Because it, it it's what it's, it's like raunchy. Like trench food is what it is. Yeah, it's a trench and it's your food mixed and then. But hold on, so, you're saying he got riddled with machine gun fire? Yes, no, I, I only found this out recently, and I do mean recently, like in the last four or five years, I found out what really happened to him, because I know that he came back from the war and died from his wounds like a year later. However, the wound that I was told, and I do mean this, and I sucked this in until I was in my 30s, was he had been, so the, there was a, apparently a metal, like metal uh, bit in the heel of the boots. Right. And I, I get told this, this is the story I was told, a sniper, so he was he was apparently land prone, and a sniper caught his profile and fired at him, and the bullet apparently went down down through his shoulder here, and then went through th down through him, right. hit. This is what I was told, hit the 
the cap, the the the, heel. the the heel of the boot, ricocheted and went up and took his toe off. And I was told he died because the toe went grand- gangrenous. <laughs> his- and I sucked that in until I was in my thirties. And then Ari Lane was doing research on it and found out that actually nah he'd been like smattering of machine gun fire and mustard gas and came home and died of that. But I do have a story about what a sound guy he was. But can so, I can I just ask? Can I ask a question? I don't mean to be rude. Am, am I? Well, go on. Was he a chuckle brother? <laughs> yes. I got, he got he got shot through the shoulder. It hit his heel. Went through his toe. To me, the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I really like. I got told this. This is when my dad told me, and I believed it. <laughs> so so far. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the Chuckle Brothers in the First World War. <laughs> so, so they're, in char- they're in charge of the cannon. You don't want to know how this goes. <laughs> so it's pointed the wrong way. So apparently, when he when he came back, my granny had been making ends meet by, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but make, she was ten mate, so she'd been making ends meet by. Uh, Making soda bread and potato bread and like waiting and selling it in the streets, like right. in the like, I don't mean like going around the street, like just going bread here. Like I mean selling it to people in her street and the next street. Oh, okay, right? right, right. And he came back and found out about this, and my granny whipped up a batch and sold it all. And then she made her, he made her go round the street and give all the money back, but not take the bread back off people because we're not beggars. And then he died. So he just seems like a bit of a wanker. What the really. shittest comeback of all time? Could have been a cool guy back from war. I got shot. Oh, what happened? Well, fucking long story. No, no. Like, but, long story. But he, he, he give all the money. Do you know what that's exactly like? Do you know, fuck this. Do you know what that's exactly like? I, whenever I was a child, like P4, P5, I had a toy car. I had a few toy cars, but one of them in particular was a little Mercedes. And it was kind of cool. And there was a guy in my class called Ross McCrory. Let's not shy away from his name. And he was a car guy and he liked it. And he said, that's a real nice wee car. And I said, yeah, no worries. He goes, I'd be interested in acquiring it. And I said, I'll sell you this for five pounds. And he said, no worries. Comes in the next day, cash in hand. Here he is, there's your fiver, his pocket money or whatever. I give him the wee toy car. My dad finds out about it. Drives me to his house, Ross McCrory's house. I have been because he fancied the guy's mum, right? My dad drives me to Ross McCrory's house, forces me to hand back the five pound, and then goes leave the car. And then goes, we well, obviously didn't want the car. Oh, mate, I would not. And I brought about. this up, maybe fifteen years later to my dad, and when the severity of it, when it was said back to him. He realised he'd done wrong. He re- and I made him give me... Have I told you the story about my wee soldiers? Pardon? My, I had these wee action figures that you could get. You could buy... He bought them two at a time. Not but like... They came in packs of two, is what I mean. And um, the... Um, it wasn't like some sort of weird, you know... It must be two. Um, it, it, <laughs> they, were, it was, they were called Core. Like C... You know, like C-O-R-P-S... Right. And, um, Corpse? Yes. And, uh, core, core men or core action figures, right? And they were all, they were all different. So they were, they were a wee dude about that size, but all the joints moved. All of them, like wrists, elbows, Cock. shoulders, dick, everything moved, head and all, right? And they all had, like, a different weapon. And they all, they were all of, like, from different special forces all over the world, right? And there was about 40 of these fucking things. And they all had like that you could get different vehicles and all for them. They Where would you get them? A special shop? Duns. In the toy bit in Duns. Oh right. There used to be a toy bit there. You would get them in toy shops at that at that time. And there, it was a few pounds for two of them. And I used to lo- like my sister worked in Duns. So like if we were ever going down there, my mum was doing a bit of shopping in Duns in the park centre, I'd have been like Sheila Right. So because uh, I was <laughs> yeah. something wrong with me, but um <laughs> Uh, and I had a load of these, right? And they were the shit, like they were the shit, right? Because they weren't as big as like an action man. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like they were, they were, and you have more control over their more, more dexterity, and they were all different. Like it would be like, here's a guy from like 
Korean Special Forces. French Here, Foreign Legion. Here's a French Foreign Legion guy. Here's a My fucking Australian Outback guy. Your mum was in it. And um, I don't believe you, but um, the... And uh, <laughs> what's she actually? Yeah. Did it take women? What? Did it take women in the French Foreign Legion? Fucking horrible attitude. Continue your story. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh... This kid up my street. Have I told you a story no. before? I'm not over this. Like, I mean, this this comes up. What age would you have been here? Eight. Right. This comes up surprisingly regularly in my life. Right. This kid up my street. Won't tell you his name. Simon. He. Um, I hate him already. Uh, Simon. So he was new on our street, right? And I was playing with him. He's a year older than me, and I was playing with him, and we were playing with my soldiers, <laughs> and I left them on my front doorstep. They're going to get my dinner. And when I came out, he was gone, and loads of the wee soldiers were gone. So how many roughly did you leave? How many roughly would he have taken with him? I had about 10 or 12 of these things. Sitting on the doorstep? And I think when I came out, there was like two left, right? So he'd taken quite a lot of them. I'm not happy, right? And he lived up around our corner, and I wasn't allowed to go up there on my own, on the Blacks Road. And, um, you know, the ghetto. And um, I, uh, my brother sort of walked me around and I knocked his door and I was like what's the crack where my shoulders and he's like oh, I don't have them and I went I'm not buying this right so like the next day I was like distraught and we were looking for them did you cry? definitely and um, I made like made a, making a noise shoulders in it? I could cry now about what went down right? do because I'd be a great so I I, <laughs> I I was distraught he, came, he was in the street the next day and I went outside and went mate you know come on you've fucking taken these like and he ran up to his house and i was like he's definitely got them yeah. and i went in and i called for jim right i went dad bartlett front and center sort me right and i says to him like he told him what had happened and he's like fuck's sake right so we'll go up the street and he knocks on the door and he's speaking to simon's man she's like oh mommy right so she goes in and says to simon and the next thing Simon comes out to the door, big tears in his eyes, and I'm going, <laughs> right, because I know I'm getting my shit back. He'd smashed loads of them. Like they were in bits. Like, Do you think he'd done that because he knew inevitably he was going to have to hand them I back? I think so. And he didn't want you to enjoy them? I think so. I'm not over this. And he, so some of them were in bits, right? And I'm like, oh, mate. And my dad was like, that's okay. That's fine, right? A couple of them are okay get back to the house and my dad has you know Jim Bartlett's engineer's mind going I'll fix this right so he puts them together in what can only be described as a mishmash mate of <laughs> he fucks it <laughs> no no like he, he was good at putting stuff I guess he was good at this this was his shit he really was like right. and, uh, and he was trying to fucking spur me you know if, I, if I've lost eight of them I'm gonna get five back here, right? Made up of spur random bits, right? Oh, so it might be like another guy's arm. It was like arm. one guy's torso, somebody else's legs, Frankenstein, an arm, an arm a face, right? Yeah. And uh, so I'm getting some shit back, but it was like you know, here's a guy from the outback wearing wee shorts with like a navy seals mask on. You're like, did you look down on the ones that weren't like the rest of them? Oh, I definitely looked down on these because one of them, the f- like the fifth guy had a marker lid for an arm like a long white marker lid and i went i remember being eight and thinking jim what the fuck's this right and yeah. i went what's that and my dad was like it's like a cannon for his arm love that and from I'm jim like, yes jim you're yeah. shaving you're shaving me like jim at the time was very forward thinking because in 2022 all they, they would all have to be like that. Yeah. They'd be like, why couldn't it? Why couldn't this person have a marker lid for now? <laughs> you know, so yeah. I like that from your dad. Yeah, yeah, he was progressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, mate, I, I'm not a lot like that. Did you ever see that now. kid again? Or yeah, like, like I was mates with him until I was about 13. What's it? Do you know what he's doing with his life now? I don't actually know. I don't know what he's doing. That's interesting. Uh, presumably, you know, smashing toys, but um, smashing things up. Yeah. I, I had a guy um, where I lived, uh, again, just moved to the area right which was always like you've got to be very careful how you play it if you're new you know it's easy to i think kids especially obviously like you lie when you move to a new place which i i, I didn't right but i watched it happen a lot where 
kids would come to a new place and had a chance to just tell their own truth. <laughs> tell a version of who they were. And this kid moved in and saw him knocking about. You know, he maybe joined in whilst playing football. I sort of got a bit matey with him. And I said, because like when you're a kid, right? When you're an, when you meet an when you're an adult and you meet an adult, one of the leading quite oh, what's your name? Tell you my name, shake hands, whatever. Care about because you're a Bartlett. When you're a kid, there's no formalities like that. So after being mates with this guy for about two months, I went, "What's your name?" <laughs> and he goes, "I've definitely done that." He goes, uh, "Shane," and I went, "I'm called I'm I'm called Shane too." He's like, "Yeah, no," and I went, "Oh, that's mad." Like we're both called Shane. He's like, "I know." And I was like, that's, like, where are the Shanes or whatever? And he thought that was class too. And then about six months later, I was playing with some other boys from, like, the estate. And then they went, uh, I, I mentioned Shane. I was like, we'll get Shane to play with us and all. And they were like, who? I was like, Shane? And they were like, that guy's called Ma- Matthew. <laughs> and I, con- <laughs> I confronted him about this. And I was like, <coughs> you said your name was Shane? He's like, yeah, it is. I said, they said you're all called Matthew. He goes, oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> I, said, I said did you say your name was Shane to like impress me and he's like yeah I just thought it'd be cool if I was called what you were called I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, there was a wee lad in my first school class uh, called another Karen. he was called another Karen. yeah and another Karen. And, 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 and I would have referred to him as the bold Karen because he was <laughs> he sounds like which, a character from an Oscar Wilde novel <laughs> <laughs> the bold Karen. yeah he was uh, but it was like he was I, I would also like if I did something bold I would sometimes come home and confess to it and right. say the bold Karen did it uh, here technically it's, it's, he did if you know it, what I mean you, the, you're walking a thin line because you potentially could have been a school shooter <laughs> and when they said like why did you do it you would go the bold Karen did it <laughs> oh man I was obsessed there was an army helmet in that class and oh, I no. wore it every day Oh, like I was obsessed with, and to the point where when I left that school, my ma had to buy me another one. An, an upper sec. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I loved it. It had net a net and all on it, you know, for like putting bits of shit oh, into no. like leaves and all. Oh what? no, I just I just imagine you in class. I was literally like four. Oh, I was no. adorable. Oh no, you were. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Private Bartlett every morning. <laughs> Reporting for duty. All right, Karen. I was, I was a general. All right, let's <laughs> let's let's not demote me and uh, boss me about fucking thirty grand, sir. Um, what was I gonna say though? No, I uh, I'm not over that toys thing. But yeah, that thing's funny about about being the new kid. Were you, were you yeah. ever the new kid? Though? No, no. Not in terms even of moving. But did you ever move schools? No, only I, when like we you moved to like bigger school. Well, but I like did, I, I did, never I, transferred schools. I did three primary schools, right? Why? Because you kept shooting up with an army helmet on, they're like, okay, <laughs> I think yeah. we're full. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> I, w- I was coming in with like soap and a sock and beating the fuck out of the other kids. But, um, uh, <laughs> no, I was, well, I moved to house. Did you keep I moved, so I moved to house. Well, <laughs> you're like, seriously, so why? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I moved, I moved to house. Mate, the answer's not fun. Like, I moved to house oh, no. uh, for the first one and then. I did two years in there, uh, in the second school, and then I was uh victimized by a teacher in there, and uh were you? Yeah, and then I left there and went to the school that I stayed in. There. Was the teacher like very Republican? You kept showing up in your I was army I was, I was showing up in my. She was very Republican, and I was SDLP. Yeah, you know, so, uh, she didn't like. She didn't like. Why my, did the teacher just take against you? She she was a dick. She was a dick like against other people in the class too. She was hitting us and all and fucking she put some she put me in a cupboard and I was like, I'm not having this. So I like, say I, I, I wasn't as reserved as going, I'm not having this. I was like Did you get out of Bruce! it? Did you get out of Bruce! it the same day? Like you came out nah, of the closet? I was I think I was in there for about a month closet? of P three. What? <laughs> yeah. I was in there for about a month of P three and they wouldn't move me classes. And my ma went, right? We're moving to school then. So, uh, was the teacher young? Nah, she was not her. Look, sorry, I'm not over that either. Like, I'm not over. It. Do you know what she's doing now? No, hopefully pushing up Daisy somewhere, but I don't know. Um, uh, she was a dick, and then years later, I befriended the son of the principal of that school, oh, and right. uh, I was talking to him. 
he was the principal not when I was there. He was the principal when I befriended his son when I was like twenty odd, and uh, I remember saying to him about her, and she he was like, oh, she was like at every year there was always kids leaving her class and all. I'm like soccer maybe, but um, I had a teacher basically try and hit me, bigger school like second form, right? Um, it was history class and. I had forgotten my book or my file or whatever it was. And he said, well, just sit there then and do whatever you want. Now, he meant that sarcastically. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he meant sit there and do whatever you want. And I was like, I was like a messer, but not not a disruption. I wasn't yeah, yeah. like, a, you know, a nightmare for teachers. Like yeah. teachers like me, but they knew I couldn't concentrate. Yeah. So I sat with like a, a like a wrestling magazine or something, right? Like he's t- he's teaching us about fucking Goebbels, and I'm just like uh, reading an interview with fucking The Godfather, right? <laughs> and uh, and I'm sitting there doing something. I was reading something that's not related to the class, and he he's walking up and down, old school kind of teacher, and he takes the book or the file or whatever. And he fucks it into a storeroom at the, t- at the door where the classroom is. It's pretty aggressive, like. And I'm sitting there, like, uh, all right. And and I never, I never got intimidated by teachers, even like the scary teacher. You're in no way gonna scare him because, like, yeah, what are yeah. you gonna do? I knew they can do anything, you know. Like, we had a t- we had a math You're teacher. Such a weak cock. <laughs> no, uh. teachers were cocks. If you shout <clears throat> full pelt in a kid's face uh-huh. to try and scare the kid, well, you shouldn't be teaching. So if a teacher did that, if a teacher lost it over something trivial, I'd be like, you look so stupid. You're definitely this sort of kid. You, you've you matured early, though, because most kids would just go, ooh. Yeah, no, Whereas I you, never had you've, that. You've gone to the point of going, if you raise your voice, you've lost. <laughs> 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 Sitting with a bonnet on. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, he throws it in there, and then at the end of the class, um, he says, get that at the end. So at the end of the class say there's 20 kids in the room I'm like the third or fourth to get up I go into the storeroom and like go to grab the book and I feel a hand on the back on the scruff of my neck pull me back and I think it's someone in my class fucking about you know you're in a wrestling yeah, at that yeah, age yeah. you're, you're Tom Fullery like yeah. so it was a boy in my class who I thought it was but <laughs> <laughs> if it's gonna be anyone it's gonna be him yeah. but she and elegance but they just kept pulling me back <laughs> And I hit a wall, right? And like yeah. my head hit the back of the wall. And I still thought it was someone fucking about and it was the teacher. Oh, and he shit. grabbed me then by the scruff of the neck, but was very like, he had me by the scruff of the neck. And I think then he had his hand, then he kept his hand like this. Mm. And he was like, if he was a fucking pussy, like, but he kept the hand like this shaking and started shouting in my face and like aimed either a punch or a push at me that I like, I, I matrixed. Yeah. Not fucking, because I was doing a lot of like can't like Copa Cabana type dancing. I, I did that. I, you jazz handed him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I got out of it, and um, and then he just stood there, kind of almost like shaking. And I went up to tell my like mm-hmm. form teacher about it, and he was like in no way surprised. The guy got put on like garden leave. You know they're like oh yeah. Oh sure, him out. Think he was leaving anyway. But it was it was mad. But then that like I had no bad history with that teacher. Yeah. But I'd say it could be like the straw that breaks the camel's back. Yeah, like yeah. he could be having problems with like the worst kid in the school. Yeah, and yeah. Then you do something that's innocuous, and they're like, ah, they just yeah. lose it. I fucking I didn't really like a lot of school, like to be fair. But I, were you I, having trouble? Like, like, not not really. I think there. I think uh, you know, I hit puberty probably, and there was. And you a, got in trouble for that? There, yeah, because uh, it just developed so quickly. You know, it's pity you couldn't uh, have. Got in touch with Manscaped, manscaped.com, and use the code <laughs> T with me for 20% off and free shipping. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think there was like a week. At, what at age like, did you have puberty at? What, like second year, like? Really? What is that, like late? I think it's early. Well, I think it's early. Like, like mid second year? What are you like? I was like, like between 13 17, and 14. 18. No, I was. Um, like 13, like? I think I'd have been like. Like my voice broke around then. I remember my voice breaking in like in second year. See, here's the thing. Mine broke over like a gradual period. All Some right. people just overnight came in like Barry White to school. <clears throat> All right, lads, what's I, like you came back in. A, you came back in after that first year summer. Yeah, and like I'm standing there doing fucking boy soprano, doing consider yourself in the middle of Oliver, like. But then 
you know, we weren't even doing a school show. It was just me. But I, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> you, <laughs> I come back in a second year, and all the new first years are coming in, and I'm going, go and see to yourself at home. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay, whatever we've got, we share, but you don't. Yeah, <laughs> like you don't. <laughs> Except if it's McCoy's, mate. No taxis, vaxies, no jerseys. I, uh, yeah, mate, no, I, uh, I, um, what the fuck were we on about there? Um, All I'm thinking about is Oliver now. Oh, when people came back from the first year yeah, of summer. Yeah, people, people would yeah. come back in that was like, yeah, they're coming in. Like, I probably hit puberty like a year later than right, okay. whatever average is, I'm sure. I well, like, I definitely, I remember my voice breaking in, in second year, just after the shows. So, like, just after Halloween. Like, because right. my voice held and I was worried about it cracking, you know, like, you don't want to be in the middle of singing. Yeah. And I'm like, no! Yeah. But uh, one of my mates, uh, his voice took a long time to break. Yeah. And he was very nervous about it. And, like, there was a couple of girls in our class, you know, like, when we would go into, like, cl- different classes, like, our RE teacher or our English teacher would just go, who was reading last day? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, You yeah. know, if you're reading something in class, who was reading last day? And they would always say whoever he was sitting beside. Do you know what I mean? So if he was sitting beside me, they go, Kieran Red last day, it's Morton's turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Mar- Marty would be sitting there going, Yeah, I fucking hit all these. And then when he read, mate, it was literally, he literally sounded like, you know, the, you know, the, the fast food kid in Simpsons? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, you know, I'm sorry, sir. You know, I there. was like that, but I think I got lucky and like a lot of people in my class were exactly the same. So it wasn't. Mm. Plus, I went to an all-boys school, so you weren't worried, but you weren't embarrassed about that. Aye, you know aye. I mean? Nah, there was plenty of room for embarrassment. Like, uh, when, when it's mixed, like, it's it's rare. But, uh, yeah. I definitely just, it was the thing you said about, like, you can speak your own truth, make up a wee version of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucked that whenever I, whenever I started in my primary school that I ended up standing from P3 to P7, right? Literally, first day. So, in the primary school I was in, in St. Anne's, definitely. Like, I don't know if this is still a thing. I would doubt it is. But in my class, there was a thing where if you wanted to answer a question, you put your hand up. Yeah. Right? And then when the teacher would say your name, you stood up and answered it and then sat back down. No. Right? Yeah. That was it. It's right? too much. Right? There's too much admin in that. Right? Well, this was this was the thing in your woman's class. So, like, that's what we were doing. And we're in, I'm in the new class and it's this is Karen and, you know, Everybody's fucking staring at me, and I'm like, mm, all right, but yeah, uh, you hated that. I know, right? yeah. <laughs> this is Karen, and I'm standing stage freeze like fucking Mr. Mistopheles, right? And um, I uh, <laughs> pleasure to like you had you had, you were too like most Come, people you coming had too, in too, too, fucking too many words purple purple robe, my fucking my, my garland on my fucking head. Pleasure to be amongst <laughs> my peers who are, and like asking people individually how they are. This is are. Karen. I'm sitting eating griffs, <laughs> and uh. <laughs> I'm a f- oh, yes. <laughs> Coming up the corridor. Now take on this. <laughs> and a uh, fucking rare. And um, uh, the rare, so I went in and like met people and uh, and then like you know we're doing whatever the first thing is. Uh, and teacher asks a question. And goes up, Karen, and I stood up and answered it, and everyone laughed, and I went, I'm fucked. I, like that's it. I've just I've written myself off for the first year. Why did they laugh? Cause like they didn't do that. Like I and I stood up. Oh, you answered took the it from the school before. Yeah, right, stood up and they're you. all gone. And and also the teacher in our school, we, whenever uh, we were in in Saint in Saint Anne's when they were doing the role, you had to say present. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But but in fucking Saint Coleman's, yeah. they they were saying Anne Shaw, like in Irish, right? And I was like, right, okay. So they're all going Anne Shaw, and I didn't even know what the fuck they were saying. But yeah. I'm like. I, I think I was like first or second. I think I was second in the role. So first wee girl was like her name began with A, and then they go her. She goes on Shaw, Karen Bartlett, and I'm like present, and everybody's like. <laughs> I'm like you sure. went to school with Pingu. Yeah, went to school with fucking <laughs> Columbo's wife. I don't get the reference. He's always on the phone. Yeah, you you never meet her. She's right. only ever on the phone. Yeah. Right, right. right. And uh, fuck's sake, and uh, Columbo like. Did you hear they're bringing back Quantum Leap? I don't know what Quantum Leap is. Quantum Leap, like, you know, where, like, the guy travels back in time to put right what once went wrong, like, no? That's Mr. Ben? No, no. Used to go to the fancy dress shop? I'm not even... He was a baller? I can't do this. Remember Mr. Ben? 
Yeah. Sly uh, that they call like Mr. Uh, Bean got all the headlines, but Mr. Bean, who sounds like the knockoff version of Mr. Bean, yeah, but a totally different. Mr. Bean was good. Mr. Bean was good. Mr. Bean was great. Wasn't Mr. Bean the one where it would say, and then as if by magic, and then he so. would he would be in whatever, yeah, whatever the costume was. Like if it was a space suit, he'd be an astronaut or whatever. Yeah. Would you like to be an astronaut? No, I. I it's it seems really boring. It does. It seems. It seems like a lot of physical. I love training. that you'd be. Seems like, like a lot of physical training to go and screw things in. I love that you'd be in outer space, and they're looking at Earth and all, and you're just there. Mm, no, us. but like I mean, like once you've seen that though, there's nothing else exciting because the re the rest of it is, uh, go outside and change the screws on this hinge, and if you fuck it up, and there's a high chance I'll fuck that up. Yeah. If you fuck it up. You die. I would you. What if it's we like could doing, do the It's like doing space? IKEA with somebody holding a gun to your head and going, "If you fuck us up, yeah." You know what I mean? Like would you like pack? to do the? What if we could do the podcast in space? Because I've got a Tesla at the minute. So like, Elon. What if Musk is that says, part of it? You just fucking. I've signed a contract. We have to contractually. If you do hit the motor bypass at the right speed. <laughs> yeah. You just keep going. <laughs> yeah. You know. I uh, don't know why I was giving a Nazi salute on your fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's fucking <laughs> meme. Uh, yeah, I don't know, mate. I, would you want to be in space? I don't think it's for me. Look, I mean, nobody's ever offered me. Either. I wouldn't like to go now, but when they sort it all out and it's easier and all, I'll go then. You know the way when a dog does a shit compared with a cat? Yeah. It's a lot. I've never like, seen a cat do shit. You've never seen a cat shit? I've seen a cat shit, but I've never seen a cat shit. I've never seen it happen, to be fair. But that's I've what seen, I mean. I've seen what it so leaves. So do cat... I mean, that's like tree falling in the woods. Yeah, yeah. You've seen cat There's shit. cat shit in the You've box. seen cat shit, but you haven't seen... You've yeah, seen cat shit, but you haven't, you haven't seen, seen cat, cat shit. shit. Yeah. Has anyone? So, I don't know. Somebody will have. Somebody's probably into it. Like, But the there, there's a... But have you ever seen... Can I, I ask you something? I, what? you ever seen a cat's dick? I've heard about cat's dicks where they're... But you haven't seen it? No, it's like a Christmas tree shape or something where it's like it, it's like pointy, isn't it? Apparently the dick scrabs the inside of the the cat vag. Barbed. Yeah, barbed, that's the word. Barbed wire? Bar yeah. Barb Windsor? Bar Barbara Windsor. Yep. Barbara Streisand. Da, 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 da. But uh, this is what I was so, getting to though was But do cats keep the dicks in the inside? You know the way What? Do cats keep the, their dicks in the inside? In inside, because if you lift it, if you turn the cat upside down, you see it, you see a dick. I've I don't know. I've never turned a cat upside down. Don't like cats. I'm allergic to them. Yeah, they're, sh they're wee bastards. Also, they've no charm. Here's the thing. <laughs> don't do, a, a, a cat doesn't. Do you know who I don't like this? It's controversial. The super vet annoys me. Don't like Who's him. That? Full of himself. No, someone. Oh, this have guy. You, have you done podcast with him? Yeah, the, the Noel Fitzpatrick. The super vet, the program. Also, that's a nickname. I guarantee he sort of started, or at least you have to be like, don't yeah. call. imagine people built uh, Kieran so, Bartlett super comedian. You'd be like, well, you know, uh, well, that sounds like you've started that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I just yeah. I don't like the super vet. Are you talking about me or hung Kieran Bartlett? Because <laughs> <laughs> big cock Kieran Bartlett. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like the super vet. I, I know a lot of people like him, but I is I, he I isn't he the guy like and he does like like actually mad shit where it's like I'm gonna repair this fucking fifteen year old dog's hip, and you're like help people. Yeah, you know that's controversial. I'm gonna get cancelled for that, but like he's like I'm gonna do it with bamboo and a fucking VHS player. You know, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's I not, don't like I don't. It's all about him. I, it should be about the wee animals. Yeah, like see to be fair, right? I wouldn't wish harm on on. Uh, cats but I don't like them like they, they harm me right do you know what I mean I, I don't believe that cats have owners they have slaves mm -hmm. do you know what I mean I don't like that and I'm scared of dogs but I do I, but I do like dogs yeah but this is what I was getting to you know I was saying when a dog does a shit sometimes it's like a, like it's a mound of shit yeah. right but when a cat does one it's just like a wee fucking what would you even call it a wee fucking bourbon biscuit with her on it right yeah and I feel like if That's I went, what I, would have I feel it. like if I went into space now, yeah, all the other astronauts who are all wee skinnies and wee hard bodies, <laughs> they'd be doing wee cat sized shits. Yeah. We oh, all I've eaten for the last six months is like fucking, you know, rehydrated fucking potato mix or whatever. Yeah, I know that if I went there, like I would be doing if I did one of my shits in space and it went past the window, I'd get sacked. Yeah, Do you yeah. Know what I mean? Like I, that's what I. It think would change the course of 
plus human existence. to be fair, I reckon if I was on the International Space Station, yeah. it might be a problem for elements in Alley Town to do a fucking Chinese delivery. Like, yeah. I, they won't even go as far as Bally McCash. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's no way they're going in that outer atmosphere. Where are you, my fucking four miles to the right of Mars, mate? <laughs> I was going to say, where are you? Just, do you know where Rand's belt? <laughs> I'm fucking... I'm on the belt buckle. <laughs> I don't even understand space. Do you ever think about space? I do, so ask me anything. Mate, no, do you ever, like, actually think about space yeah, and after about thinking days. about it? After thinking about it for about six minutes, you immediately go, no, Like, I, it freaks me out. It doesn't freak me out when you have a heavy understanding of it. <laughs> a heavy, heavy understanding of a weightless existence. Space is one of those things, man. There's a lot to it. A lot. I feel like I'm talking to Brian Cox right now. Not the actor. He's brand mainstream. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I would, yeah, I fucking would know a lot about How, space. Do you actually? Yeah. What do you know? What do you want to know? I want to know. I want, I, right, so I want to know. We're the only planet that can have fire. Where the conditions are right for fire. Is that true? Yep. In our solar system? What do you mean? Surely there's fire on Mars. Nope. You're getting confused. Life on Mars, David Boy. That's a great song. It is. Uh, um, surely, there's. F- surely, you could set a fire on Mars. Why can't you? Is this true? It sounds like shit. Uh, Mike, can you look that up? That sounds about right. Because you need a lot of oxygen. You but need there a lot is of oxygen. oxygen on Mars. Is there not? No. Nope. It sounds like BS, but like it's please, a different please kind of oxygen. Please look up. Is there oxygen? Possible? It's a different kind of oxygen. No, nice. Have you ever been to Oxygen Festival? No, I was never allowed. By the organisers? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I call my mum and dad as well. <laughs> Allow me to... Do you want to go for a sleepover in my house? Let me check with the organisers. <laughs> See, if I, if I... When I was a kid and you were a kid, if I'd hosted you for a sleepover, there'd be a million caveats. I wouldn't have been allowed to go. Your parents would come the day before to do a site visit. <laughs> I, w- I would not have But Jim would have shown up With a hard hat on The clipboard <laughs> <laughs> Karen, Karen needs it to be The right temperature I, Do you know what he actually what, Amazingly what he used For his real job Was a clipboard And a stopwatch It would be amazing If he fucking oh, showed up And was oh, like oh, oh. How long does it take you To make breakfast He's very specific yeah. on this <laughs> Ma Bartlett's getting you To replace appliances And all She's like That's not the brand Karen likes pancakes done on <laughs> <laughs> it's a top point <laughs> fuck off uh, I don't know mate I, I wouldn't have been allowed I didn't I didn't go on sleep I was never allowed my ma's like well put a film on and you're like why put it on when we can perform it <laughs> 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 I did love a wee performance like yeah I could I could definitely like do a one man show of seven brides for seven brothers I could be all the brides and all, all the brothers. brothers yeah mate yeah 100% nice. what, what is seven brides seven brothers Shane, you're hurting me here. Like it's a classic musical with Hard Kale, you know. Don't know who that is. Hard Kale. He played. He's in Calamity Jane as well. He played Bill Hickok. You, you're like top trumps, always outdoing yourself. With you mentioned someone on the podcast, I said I don't know who they are, and then you said their name more aggressively. No, but Hard Kale. Do you like, not know fucking Gregory Simpson? Fam- famous singer with like you know a very rich, I believe, baritone voice, and then. Uh, J- Jane Powell I think she has like the big soprano voice she plays his wife so basically he's like a scrummaging backwoodsman and he has like six brothers and they all live <laughs> like tramps backwoodsman yeah sounds like a description of someone at the giant ring <laughs> so, <laughs> so, my uncle's a scrummaging backwoodsman <laughs> <laughs> by night and then <laughs> taking the dog for a walk there's nothing so, on that I will be <laughs> <laughs> the dog just has fucking Vietnam eyes you know what I mean so there's like uh, yeah so he has like six brothers and they're all living like like hogs in this farm and he goes into town looking for a wife and he fucking convinces some woman to come and uh, come and live with him like and this is like in, in you know it's old timey like and uh, 90s I and um 1790s and um she she goes out and lives with him but then Realizes the way they're living, fucking won't have it. Cleans the cleans the place up, cleans them up, and then sends them out looking for women in the town, and and the women like them, but the women are all got like suitors already, and then uh they kidnap these women, and take them back to their farm, and there's an avalanche. I mean, when you're saying this, 
It, it doesn't sound great. No. But it's a good show. It's good fun. And then they fall, all the women fall in love with them. But it, it retells the story of the Sabine women from Plutarch's Lives. That's, that's Have what you ever been about. skiing? <laughs> you mentioned Avalanche. you ever been skiing? No, I think I probably caused a fucking Avalanche. No, I haven't. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't think it's for me. I, I don't like to be out of control in that sort of way. Like, And I would definitely not have the control. You said you're good at it, though. Oh, look at me. Like, you can tell. You have a skier's you can just physique. Tell be it. Yeah. I don't know if they do second skins in my size. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, no, it's not for me. All, I hate anything. I really, like, I really hate anything where the, the where there's a, a culture around it that requires specific clothes, perhaps even multiple, multiple types of clothes. So, like, yeah. you're going skiing. You need that ski, I'm out on the mountain shit. Yeah. And then you need, I'm a wanker in the ski lodge. Clothes. Well, it's called that price scheme, my friend. Uh, well, that exact, that. Meet me in the chalet for a hot Oh, party. mate. That's, that would be like me going, come round to the house. You have to wear flounces when we're eating. And then I pray eat. You know, you <laughs> Can get. Can I tell you something what? when I was skiing? We went second year in school. School ski trip, right? Why not? And it was in France. It was outside Lyon. Mm-hmm. And, uh. And there was, uh, we were in second year, but there was people from all different years in school. Right. So like older fellows. Yeah, fellows. yeah. And the older guys, so say we were second year, the fifth years bought a box of beer. And they were like, and the teachers definitely knew about it, but they were like, look, we're probably not, we're probably best not fucking kill themselves if they, they, if they were trying to put out fires everywhere. Yeah. Like let them have drinks in the room. If it goes to another level, we'll sort it out. The teacher's attitude. Anyway. Me and my wee mates in my year weren't drinking, but one guy was. And he's like putting the beers away. He's going up to the older boys. Gives another few. He's buying beers off them. And he's like just sinking beers. And he's like fucking 11, right? And he's like, as soon as we finish skiing, he's on the beers. And he gets like, there's dumpies. You know, he dumpy beers. They're those, right? And, uh, and he gets fucking like blind drunk. He gets blind drunk. And we're all supposed to go out at like 8 o'clock the walk around the wee village and we used to go get a pizza and go bowling or something and he's like coming to join us but the teachers are coming too and he's so drunk that the older boys are going shit if the teachers see he's drunk we'll get the blame it'll stop all the drinking so they try and convince him stay in the room they're like don't come out tonight say you feel sick you stay in the room get asleep and he's like no I'm going we're going out we're going out Woo! he's like yeah we're doing it and then there was like a an Asian guy in fifth year of my school and he goes, listen, he's a big guy. He goes, you're not going anywhere. And, and he's like a dead serious guy. And my mate in my ear goes, no, fuck it. He goes, we're going out. And the guy goes, <coughs> I'm going to have to neutralize him. <laughs> and we all went, right? And there's like 20 people in our room being like, what's he going to do? And he goes, I'm going to put him down and put him to bed. And he went over to the guy, we're like, what the fuck's he gonna do? Some like ancient Asian like thing, like he's gonna tap him on the shoulder and that like send some like nerve that controls your sleep. He went up to him, <laughs> just goes up to this fucking drunk 11 year old, punches him in the gut as hard as he can. And then like the guy like doubles over and starts being like, ah! And like, and then the teachers come. He thought he was gonna knock him out. Hitting him in the stomach. Bed, but he punched him in the stomach as hard as he could. And the guy was just, oh, and like crying <laughs> like as loud as he could. And the teachers came in and the whole thing got busted. But I just think it was so funny where he's like, going to neutralize it. <laughs> oh, and then like caused so much chaos. Same trip, same guy that was drinking in our year was in my room, staying in my room. There was four of us. And this is so like young kid boy thing to do. And it's so shit. Right, but at that age you don't know. We were up on like the fifteenth floor and we used to, and the village was down below us and we would like throw celebrations out the window. Sweets, right? So shit. So wasteful. Try and hit car <laughs> Hit waste shit. Try and hit cars, right? Try and like you know Yeah hit cause accidents. People No yeah. no one's trying to cause an accident, but you're just like But if an accident happens you're all happy about it. Exactly. So we're like throwing things out and then uh, but we're only throwing wee tiny things and then this guy who was the guy that got punched gets like a muffin in plastic wrapping you know it's like a wee log type it's muffin qu- quite quite a large item yeah substantial right and it's quite hard 
and he opens the window and we're all peeking out to see if we've hit any car or anything again fucking so embarrassed by that but like at the time we're like it's great fun no one's getting hurt was our yeah. attitude he takes this like fruit loaf and he doesn't just like drop it out the window he throws it down so he throws it down we like he moves away from the window we're like oh shit we all peer out underneath us about 15 stories down on the hard snow there is an old woman lying on her back with her dog beside her barking and then when someone looks out again there's about 10 people around her and about 5 people said you've killed her you've killed her and we sprinted out of the room locked the room went to some like communal like pool room or something started like playing snooker and then waited and we were like we are fucked and people from the hotel were running about the rooms trying to work out exactly what happened and to this day if just nah, that, yeah. we heard that like someone saw her like get up and they like helped her up or something but like that guy theoretically could have killed someone yeah. with a fruit loaf on a school ski trip mental sconed her if you will that's why they pay me the big bucks but they, they, they don't pay me but um the i went on a school trip mate i went on a super tag school trip right like i mean you know we're going for the priesthood here type of school trip <laughs> Right, no, so you didn't go. To, you went to the priesthood for a tr- trip. <laughs> no, right. so our school was. Uh, Sorry, I'm just making sure my Tesla is charging. Oh my god, what a what an absolute wanker comment that is. But um, I want to tell you a story, but I want you to look deep into my eyes when I'm telling Sorry, you. Sorry, I just have to make sure it's charging because if it's not, I can't get I can't get home. I'll drive you home in a real car. But then I won't have the car. <laughs> oh yeah, it's charging. I think we're all good. Apologies. So no, it's okay. I was probably great for the podcast, but the, the um, the so I went to a diocesan grammar school. So there's four of these, right? In our diocese, so there's us. There was Aquinas, Our Lady in St. Pat's, Garantar, and uh, fuck, what's the other one? It uh, doesn't matter. It does. It matters to me. Simalagis, Sim- right? So there's about twenty five, thirty kids from each school teachers from each school and we all went to Rome in year 2000 and you know the the new millennium the Pope was doing plenary indulgence you get to stroll through this door all your fucking sins are forgiven right whatever and um it was a big new millennium or old millennium? what? year 2000 the last year or the first year? the first year of the new millennium right so uh you went in AD1 bro? (laughs) alright so yeah so you get the it was like a year of I'm going to say year peace or something like that. It was like there was some name for it, right? Um, probably something really rare. And uh, so anyway, we went. Now, I was mainly going for that, pussy. For that, col- <laughs> I was going for that Coliseum <laughs> shit. So you, <laughs> that was what you call it? Yeah, you got to go see give the Daddy col- some of that Coliseum yeah, shit. Yeah, give me some of that arena pussy. So um, uh, do you know why it's called an arena? This is good. This is a good wee bit of trivia. Enjoy this. Arena is the Latin word for sand. And that's what was on the floor. So that's what, what anyway so they soak up the blood so the um it's good knowledge in it it's yeah good, it's good shit so i was going for that and you, we got to go into the catacombs and all and it was a fucking brilliant trip but the, one of the things that we did do as well we went to see a lazio match right a load of fucking kids from belfast right going into lazio uh in the olympic stadium so where one kid is fuck up from uh like i think he was only in first year we went and there wasn't meant to be any first years going but he got like you know i think his family like pet like we're loading did a wee additional you know school was doing a brick fund at that time to get a new school and all this right whatever i think they bought like a stack of bricks so he got to go and he was he made his wee pube and uh they <laughs> they he lost his ticket so we we got given our tickets for the match on the buses that we travelled on to the game. Right. And between the bus and walking in through a door, his dickhead had lost his ticket, right? And they bought one off like a ticket scalp, right? Yep. Outside. And uh but his ticket then was like you know, like nowhere near the rest of us. Yeah. So g- genuinely this happened and w- one of the teachers was like, He's the youngest person on a trip. We can't let him sort of go and sit on his own. Uh, but weirdly, instead of one of the teachers, teachers going, go. I'll do that, I literally went, I'll take it, and they gave me a ticket. 
And I, I watched the first half of that game in the middle of a load of fucking ultras. Like. Yeah, because if anyone doesn't know, the Lazio fans in Italy are like... They're mental. They're fascist. The most like. mad fans. It, potentially some of the maddest fans in world they football. They were playing against Brescia and they fuck, They were fucking flares at each other. It was mental. And then, But there were still quite a lot of seats vacant. Like, So I, I just sort of went... I watched the first half there and went... What are you doing? Fuck 14. Right. Just went, fuck this, I'm going to go back and just sit with everybody else anyway. And we could have just done that, but it was fucking crazy. And uh, Ravinelli was playing for Brescia and he scored and Veron scored for Lazio. But uh, yeah, good times. It's a good story, wasn't it? Yeah. Sorry, we stay in a convent. As, as I'm saying, mass every day, super takes, right? Right. And there was a, oh, there was a guy there. Uh, oh, he was from St. Malachy's. He was 17. And already had that, I've been in the priesthood for 40 years mentality of like, he wore something not dissimilar to this, yeah. but grey. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. standing like this, and he was like well, 17. Going, his back. Guys, I, I just want to say I'm really enjoying being here with you. And I'm going, will you fuck up? And then uh, the food in the convent, mate, I mean, you're in Rome. The food in Rome is fucking unreal. Oh, I know, yeah. The food in the convent was shit. Yeah. And I mean, mate, th- there was bread rolls that they were putting out. And uh, we we scooped one of them out to see... What was I say? He's telling me to plug your podcast. All right, sorry. Um, well, can I just tell us first? Absolutely. We, we scooped one of these rolls out because we knew they were giving us the same rolls meal after meal and we were in there. Like, you know... Yeah. The same rules, and so we scooped one of them out and left it there, and they served it for a further four days, uh, and then they gave us pizza one night. This was meant to be a treat. The nuns, the nuns have asked us to stay in for dinner tonight, and they're gonna do us a dinner. And it was pizza, and it was deep. What do you call deep it? Dish? Deep, deep pan, right? And the bottom of it, mate, was like as black as a fucking shelf. Like it was disgusting. Fuck's it was burnt to fuck. Sorry, I'm not over it. Like, but I mean. I, did, I had my first panini when I was there. It was fucking amazing. Saw a Coliseum for the first time. Do you ever see when you drive past the Coliseum for the first time? Don't you just go, what the fuck? Like it's mental. Yeah. I, I loved it. I thought Rome was cracking silly. It you is. have a podcast out. It's called No Blasters. No Blasters. And it comes out where it will already have been out because yeah, we're in the coming out. Is this quantum Wednesday? leap here. I don't know where we are. Is this Wednesday? Yeah, this is coming out? It will have been out yesterday. Right, okay. So a few episodes. Who are the first two episodes with? Uh, Aaron Butler is episode one and Dave Elliott's episode two tell the people about it so no blasters it's a comedy podcast with me hosting it and what we do is we get guests on and we'll play best of three on FIFA 22 and uh, I mean who do you think is going in them games like and we'll have the Biscuit World Cup and we'll do a what's gift. a Biscuit World the Cup the Biscuit World Cup it is what it sounds like mate I provide biscuits We'll we we'll match them off and versus them. So yeah, we we'll try like you might try like an Oreo mm-hmm. versus a custard cream or something. Right, and then we rate them out of ten and then decide what one progresses to the next round. I feel like round one's gonna go on for a long fucking time. Yeah, uh, I mean we've already had some big hitters on there first few. Episodes. Have we lost? Uh, like, don't give anything away. Have we lost any big biscuit at this early stage. I don't think we'll, Oreos. Oreos are out. I'm not Fair. into them. Oreos like, are good. But there's better biscuits out there. Yeah, yeah. Ore- Oreos. Sure. Oreo is probably the biggest biscuit that's out. I you know think. what? Oreo's a bit like Post Malone. Quite modern, sort of new. Uh, I know they're not new, but you bad know what I mean. Bad for your teeth. Yeah. Bad for your teeth, and also like like decent, but like that's I mean, compare, somebody, compare Post Malone with Motown. You know, some, if somebody Marvin handed Gay. me, you know, Post Malone with a glass of milk, I'll take it. Like. But I would rather have. But M&M. a cu- custard cream is your Stevie Wonder. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? it's classic. Yeah. It's timeless. All the the ones the the ones that I think are gonna go far, are like. A, who should we be keeping an eye on? A here? tonics caramel wafer. I think that's gonna mm, go. I think that's gonna go far. Excellent shout. I yeah. think a Kit Kat will go far. Although, mate, bourbon. I don't know about bourbon. Chocolate hobnob. <sighs> do, do you know what? Do you know what I really like? Food. I can't eat them anymore. Chocolate digestive. They weren't as good. Uh, we tried them. The, fuck, I think they're out as well. I think you're doing it wrong. Milk chocolate. Keep them in the fridge. Milk chocolate, that's right. Keep them in the fridge, chocolate digestive, right? And then 
make like a wee sandwich out of them, as in two. What do you what do you put them together with? No, no, nothing. Just you're eating two biscuits at a time, but the chocolate's touching, and you eat eat it like a wee, right. wee sandwich. Do you ever? Do you know what is a good time? Do you ever make a, a jam biscuit with just normal digestives? No. Never put two di- digestives together with jam. Am I the only? No, person? I don't. I don't like anyone who butters their biscuits too. I no, think I, that's I, a that's, work of Satan. I, I wouldn't. I don't mix butter with I, jam. But I. But there's people who, and there might be some people in this room who who cut open a nice finger or a coconut finger and butter that. Stinking. Devil worshiper. Like. I. That is stinking. so bad. Wouldn't do that. But anyway, so we we'll have the biscuit world cup, and then we also have. Um, what day do the episodes come out? Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Um, and we'll have a, a gift exchange, which is possibly my favourite part. What's the best one you've got? Because you've banked a load of episodes so far, but so without Hannah giving McDonald it away. has won the gift exchange so far, like, because there were extremely thoughtful personal gifts. So, like, it's to be less than a fiver, and they get one back. I less think, than a I don't want to make you mad, but I think someone you give a gift to did not take their gift home. And it may be in our kitchen downstairs. And it's not like they've forgotten it. They've put it away to not take it home. A rakes of iron butler. I know what the it's gift not. is. I don't know who the person is. <gasps> tell is me, it Patty? No, tell me what the gift... Tell me what... So, we've had William... Da- is it Dave? What did I get Dave? I get... Put it this way. What did I get for Dave? I There's can't a w- remember. Put it this way. If a you book? If you go into our tea bag cupboard... There's tea bags, there's Punjana, and there's Will Smith's autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants that, like. It's a gift nobody wants. Yeah. I'm sorry, like, Will Smith <laughs> is one of the most talented performers of the last few decades. Like, the guy can fo- can do it all. Yeah. Some of his music's incredible. Brilliant actor, funny, all that kind of stuff. And, like, has probably led, like, quite a wild life. Like, done a lot of things. But Will... Nobody wants to read your book. Yeah. And stop having that weird beard that's just down here. Do you know what I think? I think he's he's murdered his own great profile in the last year and a half with all the... TikTok type me, stuff. Me and my wife are weird. Stuff. But he... um he They're bringing... They've rebooted the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but it's like mo- way more drama and it looks <sighs> incredible. I'm sick of reboots so, though. Although I will say this. And I, this isn't a reboot because it is... It's a it's a an offshoot of an existing franchise. Cobra Kai is fucking awesome. I I, I like it a lot. I st- I probably two series to catch up on. I've watched two or three, mm. and I like it. But I love it. I, I think it's cheesy. Yeah. Oh, but I, I love the it's cheese. It's just fun. It's fun. It's, it's great. Soundtrack's good. All that kind of thing. What, what do you What do you want to like? What are your hopes for the podcast? Like, um, money. No. Um, I think. Uh, I want people, I want guests to come on up and have a good time, and it's a bit of crack. Where like, I want to, I want to beat them on FIFA, but it doesn't really matter. But it, it matters. Well, do you and, know what uh, I think? A couple of thoughts here. Number one, can I just say, unrelated to that, you've sold out three nights in the limelight with your stand-up show. Yeah, having taken a break from stand-up and sometimes doing it for a while and not doing mm-hmm. it. So to sell out three shows, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. is brilliant so very congratulations on that thanks for helping it no that's all I wanted no <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing personal achievement thank you thank you Shane for helping me attain the amazing personal achievement kingmaker <laughs> now what I will say is I think down the line nothing to think about now I think you could do a live version of No Blasters with a giant screen. I think that too. And you're playing FIFA with mystery guests. I think that too. I think that would be a fucking gag. I think that would be epic. And I think, I think that people, I think that it's good that you can, if you're not into FIFA, it's still like a normal podcast where we're talking shit and slobbering each other and having a laugh. But then also there's moments of high tension brought about by the game. And if you're into FIFA, you get to watch us play FIFA a bit and then talk shit too. So it's sort of a yeah. bit of a, it's just a wee bit of a crossover, a wee bit of something different, like because people are just used to seeing me sort of sitting yeah. talking shit. So and does it go? Um, is it YouTube as well? Yeah, it'll be on YouTube, and we'll have all like new socials starting as well. So look out for Kieran Bartlett comedy on Instagram and TikTok. I think all the all the stuff. Yeah, Twitter. Yeah. You're. Already I'm, on, on I'm already on Facebook. Twitter. You just not. I don't know if we're on Facebook yet. We haven't decided. So 
I, it's one I probably wouldn't start now, Aye. but if you had it, I would I hate, continue. I hate Facebook. Do you know what's mad about Facebook? See, when you when Facebook like when you started to post videos on it, like directly post yeah. videos on it, which wasn't you used to post the link to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But then when you put the videos directly on it, at the start, I don't know anything about algorithms. They didn't limit who saw it. Yeah, yeah. So your engagement on it and your likes on it's it were all unreal. Organic. Yeah. And now, and this is like, people complain about this as if it's like something to really complain about. It's fucking not. But say I have like 100,000 people on Facebook mm. and I put a video up, the views on that are like a 1,000 yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And that's nuts. And like people are clearly enjoying it, but it just doesn't get seen by people. Yeah, I know, yeah. So that's what's good about like Instagram, Twitter especially, because yeah, it's Twitter, just a continuous it's just feed. organic, yeah. And I, I like TikTok. I like the way things work on tiktok for putting stuff out but i would i couldn't sit and watch tiktok it's i don't really unreal. sit never browse on it but i do think it yeah it's great for clips yeah it's great like yeah chloe watches it 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 fucking mate i don't know it's just it's i mean do you ever just feel like too old like already? oh yeah yeah like i feel too old well i always think i thought that with tiktok i was like i can't master like new technology a new app yeah figure out what you have to do to post on it but, you, but I do have to do that. Yeah. I do have to do that because the second you don't, that's kind of the cutoff for your audience where you're like, okay, the people that are into me now, that's it. Are you on Mishmash? Is that real? No. <laughs> I, I should make it though, shouldn't I? You said it and I was like, nope. But as soon Mish as I get home, Mishmash I get someone on Mishmash should be a good app where you what could... What do you do in Mishmash? You would take... Well, you just do what they do on TikTok, which is you take the audio from one thing and the video from something else. And you mash but it then up. then maybe like... When smell o vision becomes a thing, you can take the smell of something else and put it on, you know. I, I think smell o vision is going to be huge when it, when it drops. Are you behind it? Me, it's me and Elon Musk. Right. How do you think he got that Tesla? <laughs> How do you think he got his name? <laughs> um, that was quite funny. But guys... Uh, smell? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was quite funny. I enjoyed the way you're like, it's quite funny. So um, yeah, no blasters out everywhere. We'll link to it in this. It's 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 in house. You know, we're it is. we're we're one else studios. Yeah, yeah. It's been good though. It's been good making it. Like we're the, are we cooking stuff up. That's a wee bit. <laughs> it's a wee bit sad that Dave didn't take his gift. Dave's episode is. Uh, I've heard to look out for the, for Dave's episode because I said earlier some people apparently what I've heard some people will think he's doing a bit or playing a character. But it turns out he isn't. I thought he was for a time. Oh no, he phoned me after. I wasn't there, but he phoned me after to tell me. I think he wanted me he dead. He was being serious. I think I think he wanted everyone in the room dead. He nearly tried to fight Dan and Mike when we did the episode, like the live episode. The next day. The next day. Yeah. Like it there was, was te- like there was serious tension in the room. Yeah, I think he, he said the phrase multiple times. I was set up. <laughs> like he's going down for like a terrible crime. Yeah. I was set up. Oh mate, he was he was. And he wasn't the, the fucking Xbox was being a dick. Like it happens. Can I tell you something? What he said, like before it, he goes, "I think here's probably going to be alright at FIFA, but I'll stuff him." See, I, I, it hurts me. Well, do you know what we should do? We should. We and then should, he left the Will Smith book. That's the ultimate. That's the ultimate diss. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. At least bring it. There's a fucking charity bookshop around the corner. He hates charity though. <laughs> Does he actually? Nearly as much as he hates minorities. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's Dave for you, like. Um, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's been great. Um, if you haven't done yet, and you're on the Patreon, patreoncom me podcast, you'll see the live episode we did in the limelight. I'll send you the link for that because I'd love that, that is. Actually. I haven't seen that in ages. Dynamite. I haven't seen. I haven't seen, I haven't it, seen in it, ages. it since we did it. Really. I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's really say. good. Yeah. You saw it at the time. Aye. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired now. Do you know I fucking drove the wrong way to get here this morning? I know you're finished, but I literally was on my way to Glen Gormley and had to pull off at the uh, Fort William and turn around because it was just fully on the wrong road. What, what, like, if, I'm going to have to give you a thing where I'm like, if you arrive on time, I'll give you this, and I don't know what <laughs> I was it is. here before you, you dick. Oh, yeah, Even with that Tesla. diversion. That's right, yeah. I was charging my Tesla, the club. Guys, um, keep your feet in the ground, guys. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for listening, for watching. Um, jump on the Patreon if you want to. We're going to get tattoos. You're going to get tattoo. Your mum's getting tattoo. All that kind of stuff on your wrist. Yes. Yes. Um, Sippers, thank you very much, and... There might, by the time this comes out, be more Opera House show news. If there hasn't been, forget I said anything. See you next time.